everyone. We're finally here at Mr. Bear's Petting Zoo and Theme Park. And I'm ready. I've been planning my theme park schedule for weeks. All locked up, safe as houses. Whoa, Monty, you have the keys to the car? Yeah, Monty carries them for our parents sometimes. He's incredibly reliable when asked to hold on to things. My mom calls me her little purse with legs. Enough talk. We've got a petting zoo and theme park to enjoy. Let's see. 15 minutes at the ball pit, then to the baby goats, then over to the games. Not that I have to... Oh, ick. I love feeding the ponies, but it comes at a price. Hmm. Where's my hand sanitizer? Oh. <gasps> hey, Monty. Can I borrow the car keys? Oh, I didn't know you drove cars. I don't. But I left my hand sanitizer in the van, and my hands are covered in horse germs. Oh, all righty. Here they are. Thanks, Monty. I'll bring them right back. I hope Ada can handle the responsibility that comes from all they have smackable here. Hooray! That was awesome. So much fun. I can't believe how fast the day went by. I am full up of fun. I cannot take any more. We better get the keys back to your parents, Monty, so we can go home. Ada has them. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, they're right. Hmm. Oh, no. This is impossible. I don't have them. Being responsible is a very heavy responsibility. But I am responsible. Ask anyone. It's okay. All we have to do is retrace your steps, Ada. Let's go. It's like they vanished. Very sneaky keys. How could I be so careless? I've doomed us all. We're doomed? Well, if we don't find the car keys, then there's no way to get home. And if we can't get home, we'll have to live at the carnival. Would we sleep in the Ferris wheel? Oh, my stomach is in knots. What are we going to do? Is there anywhere else you could have possibly gone, Ada? Oh, no. Hey! I found the keys, and they seem extra jangly. You... Found them? Where did you find them? The last place you'd expect. The lost and found. Monty found the keys. Yes! Hooray! Hooray! Watch over Mom and Dad and Leo and Otto. Attention, ah! Claire! Come in, out of the field! <gasps> Leave me alone, Victor! Return to designated prayer areas, or we will be forced to rescue you! I don't need to be rescued! I just wanted some quiet time to pray! Maybe she just enjoys praying. There's no room for error in this business, Montgomery. We better bring her in. Okay! Stay where you are! Help is on the way! I don't need help! This looks like a job for Prayer Patrol! Some people pray in the shadows Avoiding the gaze of the sun Some of us need to bow our heads lower Before we can hold our heads high Victor! Let go of me! Oof, I'm in the middle of praying! No, don't thrash! You put us both at risk! Victor, stop it! Oh, well then I'm afraid you faced the penalty. You were praying outside an official prayer patrol sanctioned prayer zone. Keep it in church, bucko. That's a ticket. A ticket? For praying outside? Uh, 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 just another day on the prayer patrol. Prayer patrol! Prayer patrol! Sorry, ma'am. Praying outside official
Special Prayer Patrol sanctioned prayer times. But I like to have a quiet moment to talk to God before church. Praying before church, Clarabelle? Now who's the crazy one? Yeah, you see a lot of crazy things on the prayer patrol. The formula's angles, just meeting the standard is right. Yeah. A prayer infraction? You cannot pray for Pastor Pete's father to get better because you do not know him. That's a ticket. But this is absurd. I don't make the rules, Ottoman. I just recite and enforce them. Awesomely. But that's just it, Victor. There aren't rules for praying. No rules? How can there be no rules for something as important as prayer? It's true. You can pray for anyone you want to. People you know, people you don't know. Everyone. And you can pray anywhere, at any time. Oh. I, I just sort of assumed that prayer would have a lot of rules. Well, Montgomery, I think that it's time we turn in our whistles. It seems that no one needs the prayer patrol. <sighs> And I had two days until retirement. Here it comes. Riddance, that ball was on the last legs of its last legs. But what will we play kickball with? We could use the red kickball. Ah, uh, no, we can't. Janitor Jerry rode over it with his riding mower last week. We could ask Otto. He's been saving his allowance for weeks, and he just bought a new kickball yesterday. Oh, that's a great idea. Where is Ottoman? He's up there, on the hill, alone. That's a little strange. Eight weeks of allowance, but you are worth it, kickball. Hi, Otto. That is a fantastic looking kickball. It's so gold. It's so wound. And it looks like it's got some bounce to it. So, uh, the blue kickball got another hole in it. And we were hoping, maybe, that you'd want to share yours with us. My kickball? You want to use my new kickball? Come now, Ottoman. We want you to play with us. And have your grubby little feet all over my precious kickball? No way. Grubby? Oh, dear. Very well, Otto. If you don't want to share, you certainly don't have to. Yeah, that's right. I don't have to. My kickball and I will be having plenty of fun. Alone. Hundred and seven, hundred eight, hundred nine. Yes! New record! Oh, what new fun will I have with my kickball? The possibilities are endless. <laughs> One, two, three, four. All I'm saying, Kickball, is that I don't have to show you with the others if I don't want to. Huh. That's a good point. It would be more fun for them and me if I shared you. I hadn't thought of it that way. Thanks, Kickball. Let's go find them and have some real fun. <sighs> all right. All right, everyone. I'm ready to share. Really? That's great, Otto. Let's play some kickball! Oh, sorry, Otto. It's too late. Too late? Who do you mean it's too late? We mean it's literally too late. We would play, but we all have to be home by six. Bye, Otto. What do you mean you saw that coming, kickball? And Pastor Donna's sermons are the best. 
She brings history to life. It's amazing to think how much the church has developed since the time of Jesus. Do you think Pastor Donna knew Jesus? No, she's way too young. Jesus was alive a long time ago. Oh. At least 50 years. Really? Hey, maybe Pastor Donna's grandparents knew Jesus. Oh, definitely. Just think, 50 years ago, nobody knew about Jesus or being a Christian. But now the church is a worldwide organization. And it all started right here at First Second Church. Wow. You know what? I'll bet if we went to the church archives, we could find pictures of the apostles. <gasps> I want to read Luke's diary. To the archives! Find any pictures of Paul? I don't know, Otto. None of these photos look like they're from biblical times. No one's in robes and sandals. Everyone is in suits and horn-rimmed glasses. Hmm. And a lot of these pictures have cars in the background. The Disciple photo album has to be around here somewhere. Fred, not archive novices. Who said that? What's a novice? Greetings. I am volunteer archivist Victor, here to answer any of your first, second church questions. Um, is this a trick, Victor? <laughs> not at all. If a volunteer archivist did not respect the truth, why, the whole of society would collapse instantly. Can you show us where all the pictures of the disciples are? I don't know about portraits of the disciples per se, but I can show you the pictures of Pastor Aloysius and the other founders of First Second Church. No, we mean the photographs of the disciples. You know, from the time of Jesus, 50 years ago. Um, the time of Jesus was not 50 years ago. It was, in fact, 2,000 years ago. Pastor Donna's grandparents were alive 2,000 years ago? Montgomery, what on earth are you speaking of? Didn't Pastor Donna say that her faith was passed down to her from her grandparents to her parents and then to her? Yes, and from her great-grandparents to her grandparents and her great-great-grandparents to her great-grandparents and so on and so forth, all the way back to the ancient Middle East. So Pastor Donna's grandparents' faith didn't come from hanging out with Jesus? No, it was something that was passed down to them, like a present. <gasps> a present? Best kind of present there is, Montgomery. Hey, we all got the same present. And we can pass it on. That's the spirit. Now, who wants to help me alphabetize some super old letters? Picture is shaping up quite nicely. Quite nicely indeed. Ada, would you please pass me the. <laughs> oh, gracious! What is that? Hello? It's a mummy! Come to punish those who robbed its tomb! Whoever took cursed treasure, return it now! Oh, that's not a mummy, Clara. It's a. Monty? <laughs> Montgomery, what happened to you? Oh, well, yesterday, I went out into the big woods to chase some tree zebras. <laughs> So we ran and ran and ran, and then I ran through a bush that I remembered being told to not run through. Ooh, that sounds like poison oak. It was not healthy oak. But my parents knew what to do. Lotion and toilet paper. It's not toilet paper, Monty. It's bandages to keep the lotion on your skin until you get better. Good day, Monty. Where are you going? Clara, I love Monty like a Monty, but we have to face facts. He's not safe to be around. What if that poison oak of his can spread? Oh. <gasps> oh, no! That's terrible, Victor. I don't think poison oak even works that way. Can you take the chance, Ada? The chance of catching it yourself? Well, um... The chance that people might think you have it already? Well, better safe than sorry, Monty. Everyone seems to have left their pictures. It's all right, Monty. You can keep them. Just stay right there at your table. Okay. This is for the best. Even Monty will be happier this way in the- Look, Victor. I made a picture of us on our adventure thing. What adventure thing? We've had a lot of adventures together, Monty. 
We sure have. We sure have. While you were staring off into space, I added Jesus to our picture. You're right, Monty. I am? Uh, Victor, what are you doing? I'm sorry, Clara, but I can't leave Monty out. Jesus is always there for us, and we should be there for each other, even if they are covered by the most poisonous of oaks. I also have pink eye. <laughs> Now that is highly contagious, but we'll get through it together, buddy. Does anyone have any hand sanitizer? Always! Dear God, Please watch over Mom and Dad and Leo and Otto and Tot and all of my friends. Also, all of my acquaintances and everyone I haven't met yet. Sincerely, Ada. Although, actually, God, if you have a moment, I'm having some trouble in gym class. It's not like math or science or reading or social studies. It's kind of difficult. Okay, really difficult. So, if you could help, that would be great. Thanks! Mr. Grabundi, about this rope climbing assignment, I... All right, here I go. Mr. Garbundi, I have successfully scaled the rope. What should I... Oh, my. I seem to have lost my glasses while climbing. It's all right. I found them. They were at the top of the rope. And then I just hung there for another minute before falling off the rope. It was terrible, God. So if you could please change what we're doing in gym class, something like folk dancing or jump rope, I would be so grateful. Thanks in advance. Sincerely, Ada. Ah! Ah! You oh, hit. Got you. Ah! Ah! We played dodgeball all class, God, and I never caught a single so again, if you could help... Oh, never mind. It's okay. Sincerely, Ada. Hey, Ada! What was that all about? Oh, hi, Otto. I was just asking God for something, but then I thought better of it. Why? God could do anything. I know, but it seems God just doesn't want to help me with gym class. I guess God just doesn't care about it. Hey now, Ada. God cares about everything. That's why I'm always praying to God for help with things like math or science or reading or social studies. But wait, those subjects are still really hard for you, Otto. Well, yeah. It's not like God changed any of those subjects to video game trivia. So why pray to God about it if it doesn't help you? It does help me. Asking God for help always reminds me that God is right there with me. I still have troubles, but with God they don't seem... That's troublesome. You just have to keep asking God for help. Okay, Otto. I will. Good, because tomorrow we're playing lacrosse. Lacrosse? Yeah, where we toss a ball through a tiny goal, and we have to balance it on a special stick. Oh, and we have to run constantly. <laughs> Get some sleep. <laughs> the week. Hmm. That is a lot of empty space on Miss Parsley's bulletin board. <laughs> it sure is, sis. And it's gonna be all mine. Yours? I think what Otto is saying is that he plans to be the first subject of our class's new Star of the Week program. Ms. Parsley picks one kid who gets to bring in pictures of themselves, talk to the class about their hobbies, and be the first in line everywhere we go! It's a great honor. It's better than that, Victor. 
It's the front of the line. For the whole week! And Ms. Parsley could pick any of us? In theory, Ada, but with the amount of mischief I cause, I'm sure I'm out of the running. But you certainly stand a chance, Otto. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, Victor. Wow, Otto's really pushing to be the star of the week. He certainly seems worthy of being star of the week. Way more worthy than me, that's for sure. But doesn't this seem a little ridiculous? Oh, this is nothing compared to his commercials. Uh, commercials? Coming in and, uh... Hello, everyone. I'm Otto. There's been a lot of talk about how I'm a simple guy. Which is true. I am a simple guy. A simply awesome guy! Jumping over an ice cream truck on a motorcycle is just one small detail of how amazing I am. <laughs> Want to learn more about why I rule? You'll just have to wait until I'm the... Star of the week. Otto's playing commercials about how great he is? In a word, yes. Which is weird since Star of the Week isn't an elected position. See, a real star doesn't talk about how great they are. They just do great things. For example, I help out at church, tutor after school, and I'm an amazing big sister to Tot. But I would never brag about it. It's true. Your record for selflessly helping others puts my record to shame. It's embarrassing, really. See? That's the difference between me and Otto. I already act like a star, but I'm humble about it. Oh, absolutely. Miss Parsley posted the new star of the week! That looks like... Victor. But how could this be? You didn't even have a commercial or posters or anything! No, I... I did not. And you don't even have a reputation as a sweet, smart, humble member of the class. I'll admit, as the resident class rascal, I thought there was no chance. I know, right? <sighs> I suppose we can never know the mysterious mind and will of Ms. Parsley. Man, I can't wait to see the faith-based illusionist Mundo the Amazing! He was so great last year. I'll bet he'll be even better this year. His sleight of hand and misdirection was pretty entertaining. And it demonstrated that only God is capable of real miracles. Come on, we gotta hurry. We'll miss him. We just have to drop Todd off at the nursery first. Illusion. Todd, if you recall last year, you got pretty cranky and started crying. This show's a little too advanced. Illusions. Don't worry, Todd. You'll get to play with Mrs. Sneezewort. No, illusions. Sorry, Tot, we gotta leave you here. Bye! Bye, Bye Tot! Bye, Tot! And now, Mondo the Amazing advises that anyone who cannot handle a truly stupefying trick, look away now! Wow, that was amazing. I'm stupefied. Um, excuse me. Were you hoping to get inside, my dear? Illusion. Oh, no, Tatiana. You are far too young to comprehend Mondo the Amazing. Here, let me help you find the nursery. Mm. There you are. This is much more your speed. Mama. <sighs> Each ring represents a different aspect of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each ring is separate and distinct, but through the power of the the three rings are joined together, demonstrating a useful metaphor for the Trinity. <laughs> How did he do 
that? How did he do that? And for his next trick, the amazing Mondo will need a brave audience volunteer. Who will he pick? <gasps> Tot? How did you get in here? Illusion! No, Tot, we told you. You're too little and to- And Mondo chooses you, Tot. The hat is empty. Oh, the hat is empty. There is nothing in the hat. Birdie! Yeah! Well, I guess we were wrong about that. Huh, I guess we were. She was the best part of the act. Illusions! Ottoman, Montgomery. All on your way to church, I see. Splendid day for it. Splendid day. Hi, Victor. Um, are you still wearing your costume from the play? Yes. I have decided to continue my role as one of the Sadducees who tried to stump Jesus with their questions. By stumping everyone with my brilliant questions. Now, who's ready for one? I'm ready for a question. Right? Is that right? Victor, we should probably get... Here's a question for you to consider, Monty. Let's say you kick a soccer ball, and it travels 10 feet, but then it immediately comes back to you. How is such a thing possible? Um, wow. I don't think I know how to do that. Of course you do, Monty. If you kick it 10 feet straight up in the air. Okay. Okay, that was pretty clever. But it was just a trick question. It was more like a riddle. All right, Otto. Let's try a few questions that you know the answer to. You want to ask me questions that I know the answer to? I guarantee that you do. What comes out of a toaster? Toast. So toasted bread is called what? Toast. So what does a toaster make? Toast. And what do you put into a toaster? Toast. No, Otto. You put bread into a toaster. Ha! Got you. Wow, Victor. You make a very convincing Sadducee. I do, don't I? You're asking questions to make someone else look bad, just like the ones who tried to trip up Jesus. But it came back to bite them. Ha! That was then and this is now. Here's one for you, Adelphia. You and Monty are driving cars, and you are both driving to the ice cream shop. But Monty is 200 miles east of the shop, and Ada is 115 miles to the west. Now Monty is driving at 58 miles an hour, and Ada is driving at only 47 miles an hour. But then, Monty is stopping every 22 minutes to ask for directions. And Ada has to stop for 33 minutes at a gas station when she spills grape juice on her shirt. Oh no! I've got to get club soda on this right away or it will stain! So my question is, who will get to the beach first and by how much time? Your question is pointless, Victor. What? We'll never get there because Monty and I are too young to drive. The simplest answer is usually the best. And the real reason you're still wearing that costume, Victor? Ah, uh, the zipper is stuck. I can't get out. The simplest answer is usually the best. 